move on to uh, move on to the final step of the night. Now, now, oh. <laughs> A bit my uncle set uh, includes kind of the weird and wonderful way that the brain works, you know, when I'm really informed. And I could honestly, genuinely think of no better person to do stand up on that because I would pay a handsome sum to spend just five minutes in that guy's head, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we have closing the night tonight, Michael Hudson and his stand up. <laughs> Because um, I've changed my set completely from when we originally planned this event. And so everything that I told Liam I was going to talk about, I'm not at all. So I want to keep it fresh, I want to keep it new, I want to keep it current, because I'm what? A fucking professional. Um, thank you all for coming tonight, it's been a really fun night. Uh, my favourite thing about tonight is that Connor is filming this for us. Look, look. It's mainly so that uh, Gist or Colton aren't filming because they have a vendetta against me. <laughs> Every performance that I've done, a uh, cabaret or a stand-up, in the last kind of two years, they have lost the footage. <laughs> the battery has died. <laughs> the memory card got corrupted. And I'm starting to take it a little bit fucking personally. <laughs> Gist. <laughs> So yes, very, very, very glad that uh, Connor is at the helm today. Um, <laughs> um, I was at the gym yesterday, and you know when you're at the gym and they've got the telly on, and it's some really mundane program like Coronation Street or EastEnders or something, but you have to read the subtitles. Never watched EastEnders in my entire life, but because I'm at the gym, I'm like, you know what, I'm really invested in whatever the fuck is going on, but I can't hear any of it, so I'm just imagining these awful Cockney accents reading the subtitles. <laughs> 20 seconds behind, the scene's changing. <laughs> and then uh, it came on to the adverts, and I, I don't have a TV at home, I just have streaming services because I'm a millennial. Uh, um, so I very rarely actually get to see real adverts, and I saw this advert and I looked at this guy and I was like, oh, his glasses are really nice. Then maybe I should get glasses like that. Michael, you spent £4,000 last year having a surgery so that you wouldn't need to wear glasses. <laughs> You wore glasses for 20 years and you hated it every single day. <laughs> Why are you now lusting after these glasses? Because if anyone remembers my last pair of glasses, I'm sorry, they made me look like Deirdre fucking Barlow. <laughs> <laughs> they made me look like a right fucking Gen Z paedophile. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe look like maybe worry that people are going to accuse me of being on the Epstein list. <laughs> Just to clarify, I was not. <laughs> My name is not on the Epstein list. <laughs> Although, did you see whose name was on that list? Yeah. Some big names on that list, like like Barack Obama, Tom Hanks. Meryl fucking street. Like, if I got offered to go to that island, I'd probably fucking go. <laughs> There's some big names on my list. And you know that the gossip that you'd find out there would just be insane. Like, find out all the weird kinks of all those celebrities. You know that Meryl is like the queen of role playing. <laughs> She's just the best actress ever. And so you just really, really want to know all those kind of dirty secrets. Um, but no, I mean, I, I don't want to go to Epstein's list to fuck it. <laughs> but like, if I wanted to fuck kids, I'd do it the normal way and become a teacher. I'm a new some fucking moves. <laughs> Isn't on the Epstein list, it's drag queens and trans women. All this fear mongering about trans women in bathrooms or changing rooms, and it's just, oh, I mean, obviously we all know the turfs are fucking crazy, but there's, there's so much conversation where it's like, I don't want trans women getting naked in front of my naked child in the change room. I don't think you want any grown adult getting naked. <laughs> you as a parent should be stopping your naked child in front of any other naked human. Be a, be a fucking parent. Or, and there was one, there was one set of terms on Twitter, they were going insane, going, what if I'm in a women's bathroom and I need to wash my period stained knickers in the sink? What? What? <laughs> I was like, okay, why don't? I don't think 
any sane human should be doing that in a public bathroom. And they were saying it as if it was such a common occurrence. Granted, I've spent very little time in women's bathrooms. However, raise a hand if you've never washed period stained knickers in a public toilet. Thank you, fucking everyone. <laughs> And all this fear mongering, it was just so insane, and I, was, oh, I just can't, I can't. Turfs are just so weird, and yeah, all this talk of having your children naked in public places, it just makes me question are straight people okay? <laughs> no. Because I don't think you are. Like, you ask a straight person about like, their party, you go, oh yeah, how's body blood? Nine times out of ten, it's ugh. <laughs> the, the oh, oh, he keeps doing this. Oh, she, she never does this. And it's just constant complaining. And I'm just like, if you don't want to be with her, just pick up with her. There's lots of other straight people who can make you just as unhappy. <laughs> Queer people are very different. Queer people love talking about their partner, and it's always gushing. Oh my god, it's amazing! I love him. I love them. It's amazing. So you're, uh, I mean, we're just so happy that we're not being hate crimed in the street <laughs> as much. <laughs> but, uh, we're, we're just happy to talk about. It. So literally, we're not even in that great a relationship. But someone asks us, "Oh my god, it's amazing! I love him. I can't wait." And there's obviously that stereotype of lesbians uh, moving in together. Uh, after two dates and co-parenting four cats that are named after members of the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, we all love that stereotype, but the thing is, I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit harsh because yes, lesbians do move very, very quickly, but gays, gays won't have even had their first date and they'll be showing their other friends photos of him on Instagram going, so this is my future husband, he's six foot two, he has this job, he has his own home too, which I guess we'll sell when we move in together and get married. <laughs> Like, oh, well, yeah, and here's a picture of his cock. Um, <laughs> gays move so much quicker. Um, and again, it's because we're just so happy. They're like, oh my god, a human being who can tolerate my existence. Yay! <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the, the speed of dating has been a bit of a, a whiplash for me now because um, I'm, tr I'm trying to get back into dating. I've had a couple of years off, uh, enjoyed my single life, but I'm trying to get back into dating now. But it's a lot harder dating in your 30s uh, than when you're in your 20s, because now that I'm in my 30s, I have no effort to change anything about my life in any way. <laughs> I have a routine, I'm very comfortable, and so I just don't want to have any extra effort in order to have someone in my life. Uh, and I feel like that's a pretty high bar that I'm saying myself. Um, I went on a date a couple of months ago, uh, just before Christmas, uh, with a very lovely man, he's a GP. <laughs> He, he's tall, he has a very nice beard, he was really lovely, we had a really, really nice date, but he lives in Grantham. Oh. <laughs> Less so the problem of him living in Grantham itself as an entity, it's about the distance. I'm like, oh, man, wait, I'm to suck dick. I'm doing it, I'm not, like, our date, we met up in Nottingham at a oh, midpoint, and uh, that's... Mm. <laughs> and, Again, it was a very nice date, but I had to drive an hour there, and then we had a few drinks, and then I had to drive an hour back, and it was just so much effort, and I really can't be bothered. So he was very nice, and he still likes my uh, thirst traps on Instagram. <laughs> Other than that, I just kind of feel like it's uh, fizzling away a little bit, which is a little bit sad. Um, I'm also really fed up of being asked if I'm on Snapchat. <laughs> Dating apps, literally. We're on an app that allows us to talk to each other, and you're like, <laughs> so do you have Snapchat? No. Because <laughs> I'm a fucking grown up. <laughs> and it's not 2014. It's 2024. Stop asking me if I have Snapchat. We're bored in that way. We can talk to each other. Uh, but I am really glad that I have an outlet like this so I can talk to uh, you all. Because uh, uh, I live alone and so my filter kind of goes out the window because I forget what you can and cannot talk to people about. <laughs> What's a taboo subject? What's too far? Um, I also forget this uh, when I'm at work or talking with my family over Christmas and things. I have to remind myself that there are certain uh, content that you shouldn't be talking about. And especially at work, uh, quite a few of my team are quite younger. So my assistant, he's 20, uh, the graphic designer is 23, so quite a young team. And I have to constantly remind myself that I am not 23 and I'm not their peer. I'm meant to be their manager. And I can't just talk about, oh yes, well, I shagged this dude. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be professional, so uh, yeah, I, I, I can't talk about a date that led to sex. I have to be like, oh yes, yeah, so I had a very nice time at the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, straight people don't have this problem. You were very lucky uh, for those of you who identify straight. Uh, you can, it's socially acceptable to talk about anything when you're straight. All aspects of hetero life. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, me and my then partner, we went around uh, some friends' houses and they made this big announcement. They're like, guys, I just want to tell you that we're trying. Well, <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> and um, I broke the awkward silent tension by going, Matthew comes inside me as well. <laughs> <laughs> this friend, she was really upset that I spoiled this like lovely moment of her announcing that they're trying. And I'm like, but okay, why is it acceptable for you to tell me that you're getting raw dogged every day? <laughs> but it's not okay for me to say the same thing. Um, and especially people tell their family. People are like, oh my god, I told my parents they were trying. Really? You told your mum that you are getting cum inside you on a daily basis? <laughs> why? I don't want to tell my parents that. You shouldn't want to tell your parents that. It's really weird. Like, <laughs> I don't go into any more detail about my dating or sex life with my family other than like, yeah, he's nice. <laughs> but, you know, no one likes to think of their family having sex. Like, no one wants to think of their parents having sex. They do. Nice. Anyway, I'm not wrong with that. See, no one likes to think of their parents having sex, and similarly, parents don't like to think of their children uh, having sex. What? Right. And it's because, um, well, when pe especially with uh, queer relationships as well. So, um, when people hear gay, they immediately think sex. It's like a straight partner. You're like, oh yeah, they have a partner. Oh, it's me. But gays is okay, homosexual. Sex, anal sex, dick in the arse, dick in the mouth, dick in the arse, and then in the mouth. Leather orgies come all over their face. <laughs> and, that, and that thought process is very, very quick, that quick succession. And, and my dad doesn't need that image. Uh, and I don't blame him. My dad doesn't want to picture me having sex, and I, I'm not going to blame him for that. Um, I do have two solutions to stop uh, for uh, people in queer relationships to stop your parents immediately doing that train of thought of yes, yeah, sex, sex, sex. As soon as you uh, mention uh, your partner, the first is dating someone who is so incredibly boring that no one could possibly picture them having sex. <laughs> um, with some downsides, uh, would not recommend. <laughs> Rip to my 20s. <laughs> um, uh, the other option uh, is increased representation of queer love in media. Uh, yeah, we need more happily married gay couples, even as background characters, uh, where no one's hate crimed or no one dies. Uh, we need to show monogamy, show polyamory, showing positive attitudes to sex and sex work and sexual health. People talking about sexual health. Thank you, Andrew. Yay! We need those cute, wholesome stories that break down the idea that we're all sinful demons on the hunt for cum. Um, <laughs> like, like those really cute things like heart stopper, we all love that, but no, instead, we get sulfur. <laughs> Saltburn was the gayest film that, at the same time, was not as gay as I needed it to be. I needed it to be uh, gay. Yes, we have Sophia Lispector, and she's finally getting her redemption and the love that she deserves. But it needs to be gayer. Because, um, I mean, yeah, we saw his impressive wang flopping about at the end, but again, no, gayer. I needed gayer. When I looked at it, I thought, ah, this is going to be the gayest film ever. Twitter was talking about it. Loads of straight people were losing their minds about how sinful it was. I was like, yes! <laughs> this is a film that we need. Um, yeah, they were really, really losing it. Uh, quick cheer for anyone who has seen Solburn. <laughs> those of you who have not... <laughs> okay. So, for those of you who haven't seen Solburn, I'm assuming that you've at least heard a little bit about it and heard about some of the key scenes. <laughs> okay, well, so there's one particular scene where uh, good old Barry um, <laughs> he's, he's, his mate's having a bath and Barry decides to look through, through the bathroom door at his mate having a bath and his mate decides to have a bath. Good for him, treating himself. But his mate leaves the bathroom and Barry decides to go in as the bathwater's training and he goes and he sucks up the bathwater full of cum. 
Safe for the car. I don't know. Jake, I don't know what he's packing, but anyway. So Barry's there, stuffing up this pack. And straight Twitter lost their fucking mind. They were so appalled by it. And gay Twitter was just kind of like, mm, yeah. <laughs> like, it's really not that, I mean, yes, it's kind of disgusting, but it's not the wildest thing in that film. Like, at other points in that film, he performs cunnilingus on a girl during her period, and yeah. then puts his fingers, covered in blood, in her own mouth. I think that's slightly worse. <laughs> he also fucks the grave dirt of his friend once he's dead. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a little bit worse. <laughs> he also goes to a public coffee shop and types on his laptop. <laughs> I think that's infinitely worse than drinking come out of the bathroom. <laughs> so again, like, and yeah, straight people are losing their minds over this one thing, but there are so many worse things in that film that I think people should be appalled at. Um, so, um, again, are straight people okay? No. No, they're not. <laughs> um, the, the next time that you meet a straight couple, uh, firstly, I am sorry. <laughs> Secondly, um, I, I urge you to try and see beyond the blasé answers of how unhappy they really are. <laughs> and remember the real meaning of heterosexuality. Vaginal intercourse, vagina, semen, coming inside a vagina, fighting the clitoris, creeping, squirting, two minutes of aggressive missionary sex, pregnancy, growing a human, pushing an eight-pound baby through a tiny hole that rips right down to your arse. 